Hello and welcome to Murder with Friends, the show where two friends get together and talk about the darker sides of history. I'm your host, Grace Baldridge, and before we get into today's show, I want to tell you about some exclusive content and access to episodes before they air on YouTube. The only way for you to get that is to go to tytnetwork.com slash join, and if you don't want to do that, whatever, we're still going to be here on YouTube, but hopefully you want to check out some exclusive content for myself and Amir. Now, with that being said, let's get into today's episode. I am joined by my friend and comedian, Christine Madrano. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm I know. So excited. I love murder. <laughs> I'm actually a little nervous and a little excited to have you here today because you were one of the first people I talked about yeah. this show. Mm -hmm. um, where you know when you speak an idea out loud and yeah. then you kind of have to follow through on it, or else the next time I saw you, <laughs> it'd be like, oh, Grace never did that show. <laughs> So wow. it's really cool to, after all that, yeah, have you here. To, to see this it, all it happened, <laughs> Christine. It happened. It's a thing. So um, explain for our viewers your yeah. interest in true crime. How did we get talking about true crime? I don't know how we got talking about it, but I was just, I mean, I come from a family that loves horror movies. I'm named after the movie Christine. I have a cousin named Damien. So I've always just been into like horror, and my mom was always into true crime. Like, um, <laughs> this is a crazy story. My, I used to play basketball, and one day, I was probably in elementary school, there was this woman, and my mom's like, that woman murdered someone. <laughs> what? Because there was this, in Canada, the laws are really different, and there was a woman had, like, stabbed her husband. He'd been cheating on her, stabbed her, like, in the, like, her the him, body. Like, oh, body, like, <laughs> like, probably, like, 20 times. Um, but because it was, like, a crime of passion, she got off and was, like, my And friend. at your basketball game. And, yeah. Wow. Well, so actually, I, <laughs> wait, before we went to tape, you said a statistic that I really think you should share with our viewers about. I, yeah, well, I did like a, this is from a school project that I did when I was um, in high school on murder. Um, but apparently there are allegedly over like a thousand active serial killers within the United States at any given time and that statistically we've all met someone who's murdered someone. And I want to know who that person is in my life. I know who mine was. You do know who it <laughs> is. Well, it was the woman. Like, yeah. Well, you didn't meet her, but yeah. you you were aware of yeah. her existence. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about Diane Downs. That's yeah. who we're getting into mm -hmm. today. And what I what I loved about having you on the show is that I kind of knew I could throw a case at you <laughs> and you'd roll with it. And I'd, I'd want to talk about the, the case of Diane Downs because I think it's really interesting with regards to sort of how the media handled it yeah. um, and also her motivations behind it and her yeah. mental state. But if you could tease to someone that had never heard about the case before, maybe a, a log line of who is Diane Downs, what we're going to be talking about today, what would you say? She was this postal worker who was a single mom who um, killed her three children in her car. She claimed that there was some crazy passerby on the road who she stopped for and then shot them and that he shot her too, like in the arm. Um, and she drove to the hospital and she like lied. I mean, it was clearly Lots like of a lying. lie. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like um, she's also known for being very promiscuous. Like that was like something that they like, constantly said about her. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's a that's a good segue to just sort of get into what we know about yeah. Diane Downs prior to her being a killer, which is not that much. No. I wasn't able to find a lot, but I I was able to discern from uh, accounts of people that knew her that she had a history of lying mm -hmm. and uh, promiscuity, but she also alleges that there was a lot of abuse from her father and pretty much every male figure in her life. Any boyfriend she said that was abusive. Um, yeah. She was born in Phoenix, Arizona, August 7th, 1955. And I'm wondering if from your research, if there were any indications that of what that she would become a murderer later on because she had a lot of callous behavior but does that everything just seemed kind of like she was like an unruly teen you know what mm -hmm. i mean it was like she was sleeping around kind of her cheating on her boyfriend she ended up marrying kind of like her high school sweetheart her yeah. dad also was working at, at the post office nothing that i saw was kind of alarming to me besides just being kind of an, a like rebellious teenager. Yeah, I, I did read some reports that said that she had a she had a histrionic personality disorder, mm -hmm. um, and that basically means that she's very attention seeking. And then oh, they yeah. also tied that to people who uh, are histrionic will engage in sexually promiscuous behavior and then her detachment from and by the way sexually being sexually promiscuous is totally fine, fine. do yes. it natalie furtado made a whole song about it um but apparently the way that she was engaging with it she didn't realize sort of the ramifications or the consequences for her actions for example she was attending a bible school yeah that she got kicked, kicked out, out of for being promiscuous yeah yes which is 
I would like to think that a Bible school would lean on the side of forgiveness, perhaps. Yes, no, um, not like that. But they were saying like hard no. That's crazy to me. But it also is a different time. I feel like it is right? a different time. And then, but but I I think that her behavior, she she used people early yeah. on. We're seeing that she's using people, and that she doesn't understand when people get upset with her behavior. Um, why? And that, to me, um, goes sort of to her sociopathic behavior tendencies oh, yeah. that we're seeing really early on, where she, it's hard for her to empathize with people. She, you know, breaks up some relationships. She'll just have sex with a bunch of guys. She'll cheat on her, her husband when he was away, right? And it's not yeah. a big deal. In mm -hmm. fact, she has three kids, Christy, Cheryl, and Danny. Mm -hmm. And Danny is not her husband's kid. Uh, she had this, She their marriage wasn't going so well, and so she got pregnant sort of to get pregnant, which is something that comes up with her again. Yeah, with Becky. Right? Yeah. yeah, and it's just kids, she, <laughs> kids and sex and um, th these very human reactions and these human uh, emotions are sort of ploys and tools for her, almost from the jump. Yeah, I mean, t I... I don't know if you saw the interview where she describes why she had Becky. She was like, I was really lonely, so I had a baby. And I'm like, that's crazy to me. You don't, like, it's, it has nothing to do with the child itself. It's all about herself. And mm -hmm. that kind of tells you everything you need to know about her relationship with her children. Yeah, and I actually have a, a clip right now where um, someone sits down and is talking about where Diane Downs falls on the sociopathic spectrum, which will give us a good insight going into the murders. Let's take a look a spectrum of lack of empathy toward callousness. And that is the core feature of a psychopath or a sociopath, is somebody who cannot identify with another person's feelings. And they also can't identify um, with their own feelings, but they can't make a distinction between things that, to a regular person, seem perfectly uh, understandable. They don't, can't make a rank order of, murder is worse than stealing, is worse than kicking somebody in the street. And that, she shows that so dramatically when she's talking about watching the blood come out of her little girl's mouth and, you know, hearing the gurgling and then transitions to, well, I was hurt too. I couldn't tie my shoe for I don't know how long. And every time I have to look at that ugly scar, I think that really articulated what I was trying to say yeah. so much better. It's like, almost like she's a professional or something. <laughs> um, in that you can tell early on that Diane Downs doesn't see the difference between murder, lying, um, cheating, uh, all, all these sort of these bad things yeah. to do, manipulation, they're all sort of the same. They don't, none of them are worse than the other and it's yeah. all just sort of a thing that you can use to get your way in life if you feel like you've been wronged. Um, so that being said, I think that sets the stage for the night of the murders. Oh. And Christine, even though it is absolute and total bullshit, could you just outline for our viewers yeah. what Diane says happened the night of the murder. She was saying that they were out at a friend's house and that they decided to go home and she even like remembers the song that was playing. Well, Hungry uh, Like the Wolf. Hungry Like the Wolf. She's listening to it and the kids are asleep and she decides to take this road that they've never taken because she said that they like to go down like like other roads. And so they go down this road and she says that she sees a like a bushy haired stranger. She takes the car out of the ignition. And she gets into the car and then he, at, he's, she's like, oh, is there something wrong? And he's like, I'm going to take your car. And she was just like, no, you aren't, or something to that man. She goes, you must be kidding. Yeah, you must be kidding. And what then, a joke. And then, and then he shoots the kids, and then she says she like takes off her key and throws, pretends to throw it away. He goes after them, and she gets in the car and drives to the... At light speed. She exactly. Says she's, she basically hauls ass to get to the hospital. Yeah, after she, he's shot them fatally and shot her in the arm, even yes. though she's probably closer to her than the ch children. Yes. And then, like, one of her, her child dies at the hospital. The other Cheryl. one, the other child, I believe, he was paralyzed. Paralyzed from the waist yeah. down. Um, that's Danny, he's paralyzed from the waist down. And then Christy uh, suffers a stroke from yeah. her wounds. And apparently, also, Diane takes a look at her and and she's, yeah. she's terrified, Christy's so, so afraid. And Diane says, oh, she's probably brain dead. We should you just pull, pull the, plug. the plug. Pull the plug on your own Oh my kid. God. Who is alive? 
but I, I think the probably the, the biggest red flag for authorities, for the media, for anyone that is familiar with the case was Diane's behavior herself. So let's go to a clip right now of yes. Diane explaining in her own words what happened the night of the shooting. There was a guy standing in the road flagging me down, so I stopped. She said she turned the ignition off and she asked, what's the problem? He said, I want your car. She replied, you've got to be kidding. And it was at that time that he pushed her aside and then reached in and shot the three sleeping kids. Everything was done in a matter of five or 10 seconds. She said she had her keys in her hand and she faked throwing the keys out into this field. He swung himself around and fired twice. One caught me in the arm, the other one I went off somewhere. She pushed him away, jumped in the car, and raced off to the hospital. So that was her version. So if that story seems a little hard to believe, we're gonna tell you all about the holes and inconsistencies in Diane's story after the break. We'll see you then.